the River State Capital supporters of the All Progressive Congress APC and the People's Democratic Party PDP clashed. Today, members of the PDP marched in protest to the Office of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, uh, located in the GRA area of Port Harcourt, while Tonya Cole, governorship candidate of the APC, had earlier arrived at the INEC office to inspect materials to be used for the election. I mean, used for the election that could be helpful for their case in the tribunal. The fracas reportedly to a uh, broke out when the PDP members who were already at the INEC office insisted that both parties uh, inspecting the material should be allowed to inspect the materials at the same time. The PDP members led by Edison and uh, here, a deputy speaker of the Rivers House of Assembly argued that a joint inspection would ensure that there is transparency in the process. But the situation degenerated into a focus that led to gunshots and the reported injury of one person. This one, this one. Well then, let's get to get some perspective tonight because we'll be looking at uh, basically what really happened and how these how things are getting ugly. The tribunal has not even started sitting and this is happening. I'm being joined by the APC governorship candidate in River State, Mr. Tony Cole. He joins us live virtually from Port Harcourt. Thank you so much, Mr. Cole, for joining us tonight. Um, uh, with the incident of the weekend in the, at the police station, and now this, uh, what was really your um, agenda or your mission at the INEC office today? You know, um, we had said yesterday and on Friday uh, that time was running out for us to prepare a uh, petition, and we needed the certified true copies, CTC, of all the documents that INEC used to conduct the election. Now, this is our legitimate right as a political party that conducted the elections. INEC it was is meant to have had all of this ready for us to have picked it up within 14 days of the declaration of the election. We are 14, we are 12, uh, 14 days in, seven days left. We have to prepare and present our petition at the very latest Friday so that we don't run out of time. And INEC has not till now given us a single CTC document. We then decided that we will, uh, when we were there on Friday, INEC said we should come back today being Monday. And we agreed that we'll be back on Monday to pick up the CTC documents, only for us to find the entire place barricaded by PDP protesters. So were you able to interact with INEC officials today? At all. So in getting so, so on getting to trying to approach the INEC office. We got to the garrison roundabout, and the play, entire place was barricaded. They had put cars, they had stopped us from uh, getting there. So we came down to walk. Now, as far as I was concerned, myself, my party chairman, the woman leader, the youth leader, and deputy governor, five of us, very recognized faces in APC Rivers, came down to walk to the INEC office uh, so that we could demand what was rightfully ours. I did not get more than 10 meters away before we were assaulted, slapped, punched, uh, shot at, missiles thrown at us, and uh, my security force had to physically remove me from the place before uh, before more, more injuries were meted out on us. So either by phone or physically, you said you couldn't reach or you were not able to get across... No to uh, that's correct. the INEC yeah. officials. Um, that's correct. Okay, so I called, I started calling the rec this morning. Mm -hmm. I called him, telling him that I was coming. There was no response. Finally, round about, after the entire incident had uh, had unfolded and the the everything had degenerated, I called the rec round about 4, 3.30 or 4. 
today. He then answered the phone to say that uh, that we could now that they are preparing the documents, they are trying to get everything ready, and that uh, I should call him back tomorrow. I should give him some time. And I said, we don't have time. You have not responded to my calls the whole weekend. And today now, when everything has degenerated to this level, you begin to respond to my calls. How many more days do you have? We have to file by Friday. Oh, so was it the same set of documents that some of your lawyers who were said to have been arrested or who were uh, invited to the, by the police on, uh, on the, in the weekend are also preparing? Is it the same case? It is the same scenario? Yeah. Same scenario, same case, same documents. What sense do you have uh, right now based on the incidents of today and that of the weekend? You know, it seems it seems as if there is a calculated plot to prevent us from uh, presenting a reasonable petition. So it's either we are being prevented from uh, from gaining access to CTC documents that we will need to build our case, or we are being prevented directly so that we can run out of time. Because both of them are tied together. First, our lawyers are arrested. Our evidence, all the evidence that we are building, is taken. We spend the whole day. Uh, Saturday and Sunday trying to retrieve all of this. We retrieve it on Sunday. Monday morning, we have spent the whole day trying to get documents that we haven't gotten. Instead, we've been shot at, we've been uh, harassed, we've been stoned, we've been wounded. So another day has gone. At what point are we going to then have time to prepare for the petition that we must submit? So, I mean, gauging what is going on, uh, INEC must, I mean, because it's not only at this point in River State that we're seeing a, a similar scenario. Don't forget that the political party had already gone to the INEC headquarters also for the presidential tribunal, trying to get a document and inspecting document. Do you sense that there is a preparation or what are you hearing? Uh, I mean, you say you have not been able to reach direct, but now you have been able to reach him. Are you getting the kind of cooperation that you need uh, for your case from INEC? No, we have not received the cooperation that I expect from INEC at all. I have no idea why INEC has been silent, why the REC refused to take my calls, why we're, when we are trying to find out exactly what is going on. I haven't been able to reach any official of INEC of reasonable uh, office level to let us know what's going on. The last time I was at INEC office, and I resorted to start going to INEC office because my people were getting frustrated and nobody was responding to them. The last time I got to INEC office on Friday, we met a lowly officer at the legal department who told me that he does not know anything, he doesn't know what's going on, he cannot answer, that he has no power to uh, respond. I said, you're in the legal department. Something must have been sent to your desk. At least let us know when we're going to have something. Nothing at all. So I have not received any cooperation whatsoever from my neck rivers about anything. So now, why do you, where do you go from here? There are a lot of issues that I like to raise. But I mean, you say you need this document, you need this information to file your case, you're not getting the cooperation. What then are you going to do? You have between now and Friday to file your case. Do you uh, have the adequate information that you need now? I guess not based on what you're saying. But where do you go from here? No, we don't. So tomorrow, uh, so now as a result of this, I have to fly to Abuja tomorrow and go to INEC headquarters tomorrow. Now, we had also written to INEC headquarters in Abuja requesting for uh, some documents that should come from there. Again, those documents from INEC headquarters in Abuja haven't come out either. So tomorrow I have to go to INEC in Abuja and make a demand that every document must come out. The ones in Portaco, the ones in Abuja, because we cannot go to the tribunal and tell the tribunal that we were unable to file or file reasonably because INEC delayed or we could not get the documents from INEC. It's not a cause that the tribunal listens to at all. And so... We must get those documents. And INEC is, uh, INEC by legitimacy has the right to give it to us. It's part of their duty. I, I'm, too, I'm at a loss as to why INEC cannot meet this deadline. So, but I mean, if it's by their, I mean, by their duty to 
uh, their duty rather, to provide this document and this information to you, and that is supposed to be done at the state level. What are you then going to do in, uh, in Abuja at the headquarters of INEC? First of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to lay a complaint at the headquarters. I'm going to let them know that I have no idea why the state uh, INEC has refused, for whatever reason, to release this document. If everything was kosher, if there was no problem, if all the election went okay, if there's nothing to hide, then all of this material should have been released without any problem. It's a printing of uh, material. Pull out the, you made the declaration. The declaration are on sheets that are in your possession. We're asking for the declaration of results and the CTC of those uh, declarations presented. We're asking for the Beavers report. We're asking for the voters register. These are things that are legitimate to us. We're asking for we're asking for the your own copies, I uh, copies of the EC8A forms and so many others. But these are already in your possession. If there's no hanky panky, there's nothing fishy. They should have been re released every day that it delays. It worries me that those documents, something is happening to those documents, and I don't know what. So that's that's what you're sensing that is happening. But, I mean, PDP says that they want uh, uh, an inspection, a joint inspection of the materials, of the election materials. Do you agree? Would you subscribe that they, they are able to also see what you are seeing at the same time? I have, I, look, I have, whether we do a joint one, separate ones, I have no problem with that. But let's assume that PDP wanted a joint inspection. What they should have done would have been to reach me or reach the party chairman we know the party chairman of PDP. He's not a hidden figure, Desmond Akawa. All he needed to do was pick up the phone, call me, call um, or my party chairman, and say that we're going to go jointly to inspect it. And he would have said yes. If the uh, candidate Sim had called me, he's never called me, never spoken to me. But if he had called me as well to say that, you know what, let's do a joint inspection, it would not have been a problem. Now, let's assume that a joint inspection is what they said they wanted to do. The minute I got to uh, approach INEC this, this morning, if it was a joint inspection they wanted, as soon as I got there, somebody would have said to me, great, you're here, let us go together so that we see what you see and all of that. Instead, I was welcomed with slaps, I was welcomed with punches, I was who, welcomed who, with a Who was shirt. slapping you? Because I wonder how <laughs> this degenerated in the first place. Yeah, I mean, so let's imagine this scenario, and I like uh, the guys in the control room to punch the, the video of, uh, of the, the protest of the PDP. So the PDP guys were already there before you arrived. They were protesting, they carrying plot cards, and uh, there you are, Arriving um, at the scene, at what point did this uh, this uh, altercation began? Okay, so when when I got when I got to the scene, there was no placard, there was nobody there. There were just people sitting all over the place, no placards and all, but they were all over the place, sitting under the bridge, hanging on top of the bridge, and everywhere. As soon as I got to the uh, junction heading to uh, INEC, they came out, uh, someone who I recognize called Bucci comes out and stops and says, we will embarrass you here, go back, go back. And then somebody grabs my shirt and starts to push me. They grab the party chairman and push back that, we're going to embarrass you here, you cannot go, go back. And I was like, embarrass us for what? I'm not going anywhere, we're going to INEC. What, has, what have we got to do with you? The next thing, somebody hits me at the back of my head, go back, grabs my shirt from the back, pulls me back, and all of that. Then they start throwing water first, and then they start throwing bottles, then they th start throwing stones, then they start shooting. All of this happening right at the foot of the bridge. Now, these are people who say that they want a joint inspection. I have come there, and there are five of us or thereabouts. Again, my party chairman, myself, deputy governor, uh, deputy governor candidate, the woman leader, and the youth leader. We are not a mob. We have come in, uh, in, in, in uh, coming down. We are walking. I, I really don't understand what the motive is. Uh, stay with me for a moment, Mr. Cole, because, I mean, we, we try to wrap our head around what is happening and, of course, try to get all sides in all of this matter. Um, uh, we have also joining us 
virtually you know, uh, the publicity secretary of the PDP in Rivers, there, Mr. Sinek Barra, who joins us from Potaka. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Barra, for joining us tonight. Give us a sense of what really happened. I mean, your members uh, and your, uh, of the PDP uh, were at uh, the INEC office today. What was the purpose? Why? What was the agenda of the PDP members at the INEC office today? Yeah, thank you, Shil. Um I I carefully listened to the APC gubernatorial candidate <clears throat> trying to turn around every everything that happens today. You see, I see him as a drowning man who is looking for ways to play to the gallery and to you know bring chaos crisis into the states. You see, um, today, the People's Democratic Party we were at the INEC for a peaceful demonstration to drive home our demands to be jointly inspect uh, sensitive materials or whatever it could be that were used in the previous election. And uh, I heard him say that if we want to do that, we are supposed to call him. I wonder how PDP will want to take permission from uh Toyo Code, where we have the electoral umpire, who are the ones who are in charge of the process. So we observe some sinister, you know, arrangement between the APC and the INEC. And that was why we were there this morning to register our demands that we must have to be part of whatever inspection that will take place in the INEC. If you can see, we had lots of women mostly women there. We had aged men and women there to a peaceful demonstration. None of us carried arms, but what we saw was that the APC gubernatorial candidates came there with talks dressed in police uniform and came there and started trying to disperse us and force their way into the INEC. And we said, no, that cannot happen. We are here to register our demands. After all, since after the election, other political parties have been going to the INEC to register their demands by way of protest. We, the PDP, have not been there before to cause any problem or try to disrupt them or chase them away. Why is he coming there with armed talks to come and you know chase us away? And before you know it, they started shooting at us. And... And you, you can imagine that. He said he had gunshot. But the gunshot victim was a member of PDP that has been confirmed dead as I speak to you. So uh, the gubernatorial candidate of APC is very much economical with the truth, you know, and he's, he's trying to subvert everything that happened this morning in Port Harcourt. You see, we have had a peaceful election, and we thought like for once, you know, in River State, we have had a peaceful election, and let us celebrate. Just on Sunday, we were in church for the Thanksgiving, for a peaceful election. Nobody was, uh, no casualty, no incident. But to our greatest surprise today, Pastor Toye Kuhu and his APC have come out to show that they are, you know, a people who feel they have monopoly of violence. They can take life, they can act in any manner, you know, without recourse to that you are dealing with your fellow human beings. So, How can people so, um, who are having a peaceful So, protest? sorry, Sydney, just for a minute. Uh, let, me, let me jump in. Um, so, I'm in March, and I'm trying to, for, for our view, for sake of our viewers, to uh, let, let's get a clearer perspective. So, your, your folks, your, your members, were already there, uh, they were not exactly at the INEC office, but they were just a few meters away to the INEC office, the road adjacent to the INEC office. If the picture of um, that GRA area, uh, I mean, if I can recall properly how that is, I mean, there's a bridge, which there's a junction which leads to the INEC office there, and your, uh, your members were at, at some point on the side, and they were carrying their plot cards. Were you there yourself physically? Yes, I was there. So at what? So you had Mr. Tonya Cole coming on the opposite side, because from his own account, he said he saw a blockade 
on the road leading to the INEC office. Is that right? No, you know, you, you know, usually because of the electoral activity, the police always uh, secure the parameters, you know, around the uh, the INEC office. But but that wouldn't stop any political party or anybody who have you know uh, peacefully wants to come and uh, you know make their demands to the INEC. We were only waiting to see if one of the INEC officials will come out, address us and we we'll make our demands, maybe give them our, our position, give them a letter or whatever, tell them our position, and then we live peacefully. That was before, you know, Toye Cole came with the talks dressed in, you know, police uniform, and they, uh, so, they, they so, started so, going so, after so our started Just a moment. Shooting at us. Before we get to that point, so I'm trying to get a scenario so that we know how these events uh, unfolded earlier today. So... So he was on the other side approaching INEC office. Your, uh, your members, were they forming some kind of human barricade? Is that right? We were at the INEC office. We were in front of the INEC office. Okay. So he, needed, we so he needed to go through the crowd of the PDP protesters, isn't it? Before he can get to the INEC okay. office. Because I'm of imagining... Course. How, where the clash, if the roads were not, if you didn't have, even if you didn't have to have any bodily contact or human physical con contact, there wouldn't be any clash. Is that right? Of course. So it was at a point where he wanted to go through your members to get to the INEC office. That was where the clash started. Is that right? No, what actually, yeah, what actually happened was they came and they tried to disperse us with their armed men. They started shooting at us, and you know, people scampered, and we have casualties. That's where the whole problem lies. And right now, a member of one of our members who was shot has been confirmed dead. That's the position where we are now. Okay. And we are asking the, the commissioner of police, we are calling on the IG to wade into this incident immediately, and so that Toyo Cole will be arrested and this incident properly investigated. So to you know to serve as a deterrent to people who feel they are above the law. Were you guys able to make contact with the INEC wreck? I mean the people. You know, at, 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 yes, we were we were, you know, we can't force our way into the INEC. No, but either by telephone or by any means, was he aware that the PDP members are coming to the INEC office? Of course, every other political party that goes there will not need to call the the INEC rec. We will come there just like every other, uh, you know, protest happen, and the INEC officials will come out to address the people, and then the people will tell them what their concern is. And at that point, everybody will go home. They will now wait for INEC maybe to respond by way of action, you know, to our demands. Okay. That is exactly what we went out there this morning you know, to do before Toyo Cole arrived there with his armed men and started shooting at us. So, uh, so because the story Mr. Cole told us totally different. Uh, the attack, he said, came from your side. Now you're saying that, in fact, uh, his men that came with him, you are accusing him of shooting at you. But I'd like to get Mr. Cole's response to react to what uh, Mr. Barra said. And I'd like you to respond to what he said. First and foremost, he said, you came with some thugs. That's how he described those people who came with you. And he said that as soon as you were approaching, you were trying to disperse them uh, by shooting at them. Is that right? Is that what you did? Uh, Mr. Mr. Sidney is a fantastic storyteller. Uh, and he is able to create scenarios from the head that never existed. I've told you the people that I came with. My party chairman, woman leader, myself, deputy governor candidates, and youth leader. Very recognizable faces in the APC. We were there to ask for CTC documents. I've never hidden it. I was there on Friday. We carried it live. I've never hidden my movement. So I came on Friday. It was carried. After that, we had a press conference. We said we came here to collect it, and we would come back on Monday. So we were very clear about it. 
Over the weekend, yesterday, after we finally got our documents out, we said, now we've gotten our documents back. We need the CTC documents, not the inspection of any material, not the inspection of any uh, electron, uh, um, whatever it is that PDP said they wanted a joint inspection on. We said we wanted to collect certified true copies of our uh, of documents that we are rightfully entitled to. That's all we we said, and we told them we were coming back on Monday morning. And I said. I must leave INEC with my documents. If INEC does not give me the documents, I am prepared to sleep in INEC until it comes. I didn't hide it. So here I am going to collect my documents. And according to this fantastic story, I bring guns, shoot everybody, and then I don't stay there and shoot them all the way so that I can get into INEC office. For goodness sake. Now, beyond that, we then retreat to our office. At our office, PDP comes to the office, they attack our office, they shoot at our office, they destroy our office, they destroy cars, and then they go away. You know, my dear uh, Sean, River State today was a show of shame, and the PDP shamed us big time. They claim they won a popular election. What are you protesting about if you won an election that was so popular? You claim that you are the only party in River State and no other party exists, then what's the problem? I hear that there were women and, and children and old women and all of that who were there at uh, INEC office. What are we afraid of? You know, I keep asking this question of the PDP. What are we afraid of? You've had the election. You are, you are the acclaimed winner of the election. We that did not win the election are asking for material for us to collect. Now you want to watch it, then you're claiming that we're in collusion with INEC and INEC colluded with us to lose an election. How does that make sense? You know, that I heard so much today that, that just doesn't make sense. So no problem. So we are there colluding with INEC and PDP is stopping us from going to collude with INEC to collect documents that are certified to copies that we need for an election. So PDP prevents us from collecting it. We have gotten there purportedly with thugs to collect something that we want to get. You know, uh, well, she, in all of, in all of these, uh, Mr. It. Cole, where were the police? Yes. That, I have, look, so first of all, and this, this is a great question, because the first aspect of it is that we're meant to have, uh, if, you are, if, you are, if you are carrying out a peaceful um, protest, it means that you have police permission to do so, and the police will ensure that there is peace there. We got there, we did not see any police ensuring that there is peace. There was, and then we left. But to my greatest surprise, in my party office, the policemen that came with the PDP uh, police were the same policemen that effected the arrest of our lawyers, the same, the same policemen. And they're the ones that came with the equity local government chairman, and the deputy speaker of the River State House of Assembly, they're the ones that came and attacked our office. I saw the policeman there and I asked him, I said, what are you doing here? Come and speak to me. He refused to speak to me. So I have no idea what is going on. You claim that uh, no they, attacked, uh, they attacked your, uh, your office, your APC office. So uh, yes, do, you, do you have police protection for your party office? So it so we called, we called the CP, we called the army, we called as many people as we could when they were attacking us. We started from the, so the only police protection that we had are my personal police protection and my personal DSS. Those are the only ones that went with us and the party chairman's personal uh, police protection. They're the ones that were with us at INEC and they're the ones that came back. I heard him saying that we had dogs dressed as, as policemen. These are our own personal police men, but fair enough. So we get back to the party office, and those are the only policemen that are standing there. The ones that come with PDP are people who effected an arrest of our lawyers on, on Saturday. The same guys. I recognize them because I was at, uh, at, at, with the police the whole weekend. The one who was leading that team, I called him. I said, what are you doing here? Come and speak to me since you have come to the office. 
He claims that he was the one protecting, that he was stopping the PDP people from coming to attack us. I said, come and speak to us. He refused. The next minute, they break through the police cordon, come and attack our office. They destroy our flags, burn our flags, throw stones into our office, shoot outside the office. We are recording all of this live. But we are the ones that have gone out there to attack PDP, according to my fantastic storyteller. All right, uh, Mr. Barra, how do you then react to what has been said? Because, I mean, um, you've seen the, uh, the clarification that's been made by Mr. Cole. What's your response? Well, well, um, it's quite, you know, it's, it's quite funny. But uh, the point I want to clearly make here is this. Uh, Mr. Tony Cole, apart from being a governorship candidate, is a is a, is a pastor. That's what he said. Claims that he's a pastor, and as a clergy, he should be an advocate of peace. And therefore, anything that will lead to breakdown of law and order, he should be able to like sense it, both as a highly spirited man, you know, and to avoid it. Now, as a a pastor and a clergy, who is supposed to be an advocate of peace in the first place? You came to the eye neck, and you saw people were already there. But you moved into the crowd with your armed men and ordered them to shoot at unarmed protesters. Shewu, you can see the picture of those who were at the protest. They were women. We were dancing. We were dancing and singing praises to God at that place before he came. Now, he said he never came with any armed men. Will it be a PDP man who will shoot at a fellow PDP man, the one that is a, a, a victim today? He has clearly showed us, told us, that he said he is running out of time. Technically, shows that he is desperate. And when a man is desperate, is how to do anything whatsoever. He started his narrative by explaining that he is running out of time. So because he's running out of time, he can kill anybody that he feels is standing on his way. What is that that Pastor Toyo Cole wanted to do in INEC today? Having seen that the PDP were there, that will not allow it, allow PDP to go and then he will come tomorrow morning to do it.